Okay, so can you factor this? Well, hopefully you can. If you're taking a math course like Algebra 1, Algebra 2, College Algebra, certainly uh, pre-calculus, you should be able to handle this problem. But what is this? Well, obviously this refers to this thing right here. But what we're talking about is a polynomial. So another way we can phrase this question is can you factor this specific polynomial? Hopefully you can because factoring is a critical math skill for all of you out there that are studying algebra. But uh, if you could do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one moment, and then I'm going to walk through step by step on exactly how we would factor something like this. This is something you absolutely need to know. You really have to have super strong factoring skills to be successful in algebra. It is that important. So anyways, I'm going to get to all this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It really is my true passion to help as uh, many people as I possibly can learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, you all can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time in math. Please do not give up. There is a path forward. But uh, here is the deal. Okay, The number one thing you need to be successful in math is great math instruction. In other words, whoever you're learning math from or whatever you're learning math from, if you're totally lost as someone's teaching you, you are not learning, right? <laughs> Just pretty, uh, pretty obvious. So when you're being taught math, you got to understand the language. You see, math is a technical subject, and sometimes it could be taught in an over, overly technical manner. The way I like to explain or teach math is to really uh, explain uh, the concepts and skills and language that anyone can get without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for that has math on it, I'm talking about things like the SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Uh, it is essential that you become a great note taker to be successful in math. So if you're not taking notes uh, right now, and a lot of people don't take notes, or if you're taking average notes, uh, start increasing your notes okay, in terms of how much you take and the neatness, and you're going to see uh, like magic happen. Everything's going to start getting better, with you, but you can use my notes in the meantime if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here we have x plus 3 to the 4th power minus 1, and uh, we want to factor this. Okay, so let's take a look at the answer right now, and here you go. So this is the factor. Now, I would say that uh, some of you out there could have expanded this, in other words, take an x plus 3, multiply by itself, and add, in, add it in 1. If you did that, that's perfectly fine as well. I just left my final answer this way. But if you had the initiative to say, you know what, I'm going to clean this up. I want to go x uh, plus 3 times x plus 3, and then add that to 1 to have this factor right there. If you expressed it in that manner, that's perfectly fine as well. But before you would have done that, you would have had to have this, okay? So I'm going to leave my answer like so. So anyways, you can kind of uh, discern for yourself whether you got this thing correct, but these are the factors, okay, of this expression that I just showed you right here. All right, so how do we go from here uh, to, this, uh, to these factors? Well, of course, that's what we're going to be looking at next. But if you got this right, that's very good. Matter of fact, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can tell your friends and family that you did a great job on a uh, polynomial factoring situation today. All right, that's a lot to be proud of. And if I had buttons that uh, said, I know how to factor polynomials, I would probably put them on my website for free. But anyways, I don't have those. But anyways, you should be very proud of your ability to factor this polynomial if you figure this thing out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into how to do this. Well, here's the deal. Uh, you need to uh, recognize 
that the situation that's going on here is what we call a difference of two squares. Now, this may not be obvious to you. That's why you need to practice a wide variety of uh, factoring problems. But th the situation that's going on here is the same thing as a squared minus b squared. And of course, there is a rule. This is what we call the difference of two squares. It's equal to a plus b times a minus b. Let's do a quick um, basic example. If I have x squared minus 9, okay, and I want to factor that. Well, 9 I can think of as 3 squared, right? So that would be x squared minus 3 squared. So this is the difference of two squares. So just follow the formula here. The factors would be what? Well, it would be x plus 3, right? So just take the square root of this. That would just be x, and the square root of 3 squared is 3. Uh, times x minus 3. Now, if you don't understand what I just did right here, if you're like, oh yeah, I think I saw that a, a few times, then uh, this particular problem may be a little bit, eh, I hate to use the word advanced, but you need to uh, really master the basics in terms of factoring. Now, real, real quick here, let me show you, okay, um, what uh, skills you need to have in order to do a problem like this, all right? So when it comes to factoring, the first thing you need to do is you got to make sure you know how to factor the greatest common factor. Okay, so you got to be really, really good at that. That's the basically the reverse of the distributive property. Then you need to understand how to factor trinomials, quadratic trinomials, things like this, right? So if these can be factored, how do you factor these? So there's two cases. There's one where the coefficient's one, and there's others where the coefficient's not one, maybe something like this. Now, some of these uh, may be prime, i.e. you may not be able to factor them, but anyways, you need to know and master trinomials. After that, you need to know special rules, and that's what we're talking about right now, a squared minus b squared, all this kind of good stuff. There's other rules. You need to know those rules, and then you need to have a good sense of group factoring and other techniques, okay, like substitution, and that's what we're talking about, and all of these things you need to know, all right? So if you haven't yet master the GCF or trinomials and, you know, things like that, then you are behind on your factoring skills. And, you know, if you are behind, it's not the end of the world. What you need to do is brush up on this stuff because this is critical in terms of your success in algebra. If you're looking to um, improve in any of this stuff, check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Uh, those will really help you out in terms of factoring in my math help program. But anyways, this is the... Uh, uh, rule that we need to know, and this is the pattern that we need to see. But right here, you're saying to yourself, well, I don't really see this being the difference of two squared. Well, if you practice um, different, you know, problems, okay, you should see this pattern. I'm going to show you how we uh, can interpret this right now. All right, so this x plus 3 to the fourth is the same thing as x plus 3 squared uh, squared, okay? I can write it this way because there is another property of powers, a to the m to the n is equal to a to the m times n. In other words, this outside exponent, I can multiply to this inside exponent. So 2 times this 2 is 4, right? So I have x plus 3 squared squared. Yeah, this 2 times 2 is 4, so basically I get back to this. But what I want to do is think of this as a squared, right? Let's kind of black this out for a second. Now right here... I have something squared minus 1. Or you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. x squared minus 1. Well, x squared is what? Well, it's x squared. And then, of course, 1, uh, uh, you can think of as 1 squared because 1 squared is 1. Okay? So you want to think of this thing as, oh, fit in a pattern of something squared minus 1. So let's get rid of that and continue on. All right, so hopefully, again, you know, you can see these patterns, but you're not going to be able to see these patterns until you've mastered these basic rules. All right, so at this point, we have this thing squared minus 1. So let's think of this as a squared minus b squared, okay, because that's what this is, and we can factor this. So we're going to let a, in terms of our uh, difference of 2 squared, formula equal to x plus 3 squared, and then of course b will just be equal to 1. All right, so with that being said, let's just go ahead and plug all this stuff in, okay? This is what we would call substitution into the formula. So a squared minus b squared, 
uh, that's the situ uh, situation. So a plus b, a again, is this, x uh, plus 3 squared. Uh, so a plus b, so here we have, um, this is our a, right? x plus 3 squared plus 1, because b is 1. This right here represents our a plus b. Now, I'm using brackets. Brackets and parentheses, it's uh, perfectly, they're, they're equal. They are grouping symbols. But I'm using brackets because we have parentheses right here. So you can do that. Stylistically, if you use parentheses, that's uh, fine as well. And then here I have a minus b. And so our a, again, is our x plus 3 squared minus 1. Okay, so make sure you understand that. Now, a lot of you might have gotten to this point. And if you um, got to this point, matter of fact, I might be inclined to give you a nice happy face, all right? I might even give you a B plus, all right? And uh, maybe uh, sometimes I get a little bit too generous with my grades. I was going to give you an A minus. Anyways, this is very, very good, all right? However, you are not done here because here's the deal. Anytime you're factoring, you always have to look at the factors of what you just did, right? In other words, always ask yourself the question, can you factor the factors, all right? So, so far... Where we're at in the problem is this and this. And so you're like, hey, this has a subtraction sign. Is this another a squared minus b squared situation? It is, right? So we can factor one of these factors. So we need to break that uh, factor down. When, when we talk about factoring polynomials or factoring in general in, in algebra, you have to factor fully, okay? A good way to think of that is this. Let's suppose you had this um, uh, fraction, 100 over 200. Now, we know it's one half, but if you simplify that, you're like, okay, I'm going to simplify it down to 50 over 100. Well, you made it simpler, but you're not done, right? And you're like, oh, I'll just keep going, 25 over 50. Well, you're not done. You have to keep going until you fully uh, and completely uh, simplify the situation. Same thing with factoring. All right, so here, again, we can recognize this pattern as a difference of two squares where this thing here, um, x plus three is acting as our a. So that's a squared minus one, or, or a squared minus b squared, where one is b, okay? All right, so let's just go ahead and apply that um, formula right now. All right, so here, let me just kind of walk through it. Nothing's changed in this group or this factor, so we're gonna leave that there. And now this is gonna be, um, uh, a squared minus b squared, again, the formula is a plus b times a minus b. All right, so a, in this case, is just going to be x plus 3. So here is a plus b. Again, b would be 1, and then this would be a minus b. And then we can clean up these uh, respective factors right here. That's, that's something that you definitely want to do. So we have x plus 3 plus 1. We can write as x plus 4, then x plus 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1, of course, is 2. And then we have these brackets. You can leave your answer like this, but it's a little bit more uh, acceptable to use parentheses uh, versus brackets. Um, yeah, but again, if you wrote your answer this way, your teacher is not going to deduct any points. But stylistically, I like to use parentheses. Remember, you just use brackets as a way to kind of um, distinguish between two different uh, grouping symbols. Okay, so sometimes people get confused when you're using all sorts of parentheses and stuff. They forget, you know, how many parentheses do I have over here and how many do I have over here. That's why we kind of like to mix it up with brackets, but they, again, they mean the same thing. Okay, so hopefully you understand what's going on. Now, if you don't, that's actually good, okay? You're like, what are you talking about, Mr. U2 Math Man? What are you talking, if I, I don't understand what's going on? Well, if you don't understand what's going on, that is your to-do list to improve, okay? Now, there are no shortcuts to learn math, okay? If you, you need to have a commitment to it. So if you're not willing to work hard, if you're looking for shortcuts, you're just going to keep looking because there are little shortcuts and little things that you can uh, learn in mathematics. And that's, that's you know, uh, and those things you should learn, okay? But there are no shortcuts to mastering math, okay? You're going to have to get great instruction, and then you're going to have to practice, 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 okay? And you want, need to practice a wide variety of prompts, okay? So if you know how to factor basic stuff, you're like, oh yeah, 2x plus 10, I can factor that. That's going to be 2 times x plus 5. Well, that's a nice, easy example of factoring out the GCF, but you need to be able to take on a problem like this, and there are even more challenging problems. So again, really, you know, you need to do a wide variety of problems, and hopefully 
in your school or class, you're being challenged with a lot of uh, different type of prompts. In my math program, I go over a ton of different type of variety of prompts so you can kind of see the easy stuff, the medium stuff, and the difficult stuff because you need to know it all. All right, so hopefully this little video was interesting. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.